We've all had bugs in our house, and some of us may have even had something of an infestation. But what you are about to see is some of the worst most infested houses. What you're about to see is some of the very worst bugs who could invade your house. These are the worst bug infested houses. Number 15. Spider Infestation Spiders are a pretty common phobia, so waking up in a spider infested house has got to be one of the most terrifying things imaginable for some people. The eight-legged nightmare bugs come in all shapes and sizes, although most of them are probably harmless. However, not all of them. Some spiders are among the deadliest creatures on Earth. And you do not want to discover that your home has an infestation of black widows or huntsmen. But even regular spiders are not always welcome in massive numbers, and it's not always so easy to get them to leave. You will want to get some protective clothing and gloves for a start, and then you'll want to identify the spiders you have, if possible. Possible. Black widows make messy webs in secluded areas, so if you see one of those, be cautious. Basements, walks, sheds, and other damp locations are some of the places you'll want to check for spider infestations, especially in autumn when they are usually on the move and looking for a mate. You might not want to stick around for the mating ritual, one of the least romantic in the animal kingdom, for some spider species at least, as the females finish up by eating the males. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. I mean, just look at the size of this beehive. Or wasp's nest, or hornet's nest. To be honest, we're not so sure which of the three it is, but when this photo was sent to us by a subscriber to the channel, we screamed in fear. Just look at the size of this thing. It's almost as big as a human house. That poor home has a serious infestation issue. We hope whoever lives there deals with it ASAP, or they'll get stung bad. What would you do if you lived in this home? Let us know. As always, comment down below with the hashtag Juicy Topic, and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Number 14. Wasps. Wasps are flying and stinging insects closely related to ants and bees. They are also the super annoying creatures that like to throw themselves in your soda, beer, or cotton candy, get stuck there, and then sting the hell out of ya when you accidentally eat or drink them. Gardeners like wasps as they prey on other bugs which like to eat plants. But most people don't really want wasps in their homes. Wasps live in nests which can contain as many as a thousand wasps, and they multiply quickly. They also tend to be highly aggressive when they are disturbed, so this one is best left to the professionals. They like to nest under a soffit, awning, wood deck, railing, or large tree branch. So those are the places to check out if you are suddenly hearing a lot of buzzing in your home. One thing about wasps that everyone should know by now is that when you kill a wasp, a dead wasp releases a chemical which attracts more wasps, who will then try and attack you. So you can't win against these bugs, which are some of the most annoying animals in the world. Number 13. Stink Bugs the stink bug is about as pleasant as it sounds. The brown marmorated stink bug is an invasive species introduced to the US from East Asia in the mid-1960s. And by now, pretty much everyone is wishing it would just go back again. In fall of 1996, the first stink bug was spotted in Pennsylvania, and soon they spread to New Jersey and Virginia. And as I tell you this, they are beginning to enter North Carolina. Watch out, Carolinians, you have been warned. Stink bugs are pretty big, almost an inch long in some cases, and are kind of oval shaped. When disturbed or crushed, they release a nasty odor, which is why they are known as stink bugs. They are not the prettiest creatures out there, so you probably don't want a swarm of them in your house. Normally, they live in China, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, but these days they are just as likely to be found under your kitchen sink in late summer, especially if you happen to be from Atlanta or Stink Bug City, as it's now officially known. At least among stink bugs it is. Number 12. Bees 
It's pretty easy to confuse wasps for bees, since both of these flying bugs are famous for their yellow and black stripes, and they are closely related to being part of the ant family. But there's a lot of things about bees that set them apart from wasps and all other creatures. The construction of hives and the production of honey is one of the most important differences. Even if you love honey, that doesn't mean you necessarily want it to be manufactured in your own home. Bees can sting, and even though they only sting on a kind of kamikaze mission which guarantees their death, it doesn't seem to stop them if they get angry enough. Bees are pretty varied, with the smallest ones less than one-eighth of an inch, while the biggest are 1.6 inches long. They can be black or brown and white, most have yellow stripes, they can also be red or blue. They like building nests and chimneys, so that's that's the first place to check if you think you might have bees, and if you do, you probably want a pro to take care of the job. Removing a whole beehive without getting stung is no picnic. Number 11. Carpet Beetles Carpet beetles are very small insects, measuring between one-eighth of an inch and one-quarter of an inch in length. They are oval-shaped, with black, white, and yellow patterned bodies. They love to eat fabric and animal products, so this is why you will find them in your carpet, happily feasting away at the fibers there. They particularly like wood, silk, feathers, and leather, so if you get an infestation of these little pests, you could end up needing to invest in a new wardrobe, unless you want to walk around in clothes covered in carpet beetle holes. Sometimes they are confused with clothes moths, which will also wreak havoc with your nice natural fibers, but it is only the larvae that eat these, while the adults feed entirely on flower pollen. So the trick is to stop them from laying their eggs in your house, and then letting their kids run wild, eating everything. Cleaning things often will usually help to prevent them, especially dry cleaning rugs and carpets, since the chemicals used in cleaning will kill any carpet bugs that might be lingering there. Number 10. Weevils Weevils are in fact a kind of beetle, and they're one huge family. There are more species in this family of beetles than in any other beetle group. In the US alone, there is an estimated 1,000 species of weevil, and they come in a wide range of colors and body shapes. Most of them are dark in color, but not all. But the one feature that stands out in a weevil is the shape of its head, which has a kind of elongated snout that can be as long as the weevil's body. At the end of the snout is the mouth. And that's the part that's going to chew stuff up in your home. Most weevils enter people's houses inside packages of food or bulk products, and they especially love grains and starches like rice, flour, pasta, and cereals. It's easy to miss a weevil, so sometimes people can buy tainted food and not even realize there's weevils in it. That's right, you've probably eaten plenty of weevils in your life without knowing it. Think about that next time you sit down for a nice bowl of Cheerios or spaghetti carbonara. Weevil Weevils aren't dangerous, but they shed skins and leave droppings in food, which isn't super nice. So if you have them at home, you might want to consider getting rid of them. Number 9. Dust Mites Mites are tiny organisms which can bite human skin and cause irritation. There are some mites which operate as parasites and will attach themselves to a human or a pet, feeding off the host's blood and skin. Other kinds of mites are vegan and will just chew up your house plants. And there are still more mites which are scavengers and even hunters. There's a lot of wild stuff going on down in the microscopic world of bugs, and there's creatures we can't even see because they're so small that would appear like a terrifying T-Rex to some even smaller bug. Mites have eight legs and are related to ticks. Like ticks, they have four stages of development, from egg to larvae to nymph to adult. They like to live where there is warmth and, you guessed it, dust. One example is a mattress, which collects a lot of dust from the human lying on it, as well as warmth. A typical used mattress will normally be home to somewhere between 100,000 and 1 million dust mites. Make sure you wish each of them good night and sweet dreams before you go to bed at night. In fact, a pillow that is two years old will contain enough dust mites and dust mite droppings that they will account for 10% of its total weight. Gross. Number 8. Bed bugs. Bed bugs have to be one of the least favorite critters on this list. These things are insanely annoying and amazingly difficult 
to get rid of. They say the only way is to throw the mattress in the yard, cover it with gasoline, and light that thing on fire. Bed bugs live on human and animal blood, and these tiny bugs will hide out in your mattress, waiting for you to get in at night. Once you are in, they will set about biting you and draining you of that blood, which results in super itchy raised bumps on the skin. They cannot fly, but are known to be fast moving, and can escape over walls and floors when they know they're being attacked. See that red stuff right there, how it's dripping down? Yeah. That's your blood, brother. Fortunately, they are not thought to transmit diseases, but they are nonetheless super annoying. It's not always clear that the culprit is a bed bug, as the bites somewhat resemble those of fleas or mosquitoes. But if it turns out to be bed bugs, prepare for a long battle trying to get rid of them. Number 7. Centipedes Centipedes are well known for their many legs, with each body section having its own set of legs, sometimes numbering as many as a hundred total legs or more. There's a lot of variety in centipedes, and they can range in length from one quarter of an inch to six inches in length. I don't think I should kill him because, like, he eats bugs and shit. And come in colors such as brown and red. On their hand, they have a pair of long, sensitive antennae which help them to navigate the world around them. They have small mouths, but large claw like structures around their mouths, which also contain venom glands. Because centipedes are hunters and they like to go hunting at night, they use their claws and venom to paralyze and consume their victims, which includes worms, spiders, and small vertebrates. Most centipedes are not dangerous to humans, but there are some species which have strong strong enough venom to kill, so you don't want to take any chances. Better to politely remind them to take it outside, or face pest control guys. The word centipede means 100 legs, although the number of legs on centipede species ranges from 15 to 177 legs. Number 6. Fruit Fly the Drosophila melanogaster, or as it's better known, the fruit fly, is a species of small fly which measures one eighth to one quarter an inch in length. These guys are notorious for their love of fruit, especially ripe, rotting, or decayed fruit and produce. They are black, tan, and gray in color with red eyes, which would look pretty insane if they were a hundred times bigger. They also love alcohol and will throw themselves into an ocean of wine and happily drown in it, like some kind of 18 century English Duke. Fruit flies who are not so intense about their boozing will hang out in drains, garbage disposals, trash cans, and mop buckets. And they can contaminate food and drink with bacteria and other pathogens. So you want to get rid of these guys. A classic method is to put some red wine and sugar in a bowl, cover it with saran wrap, poke a few holes in the plastic, and watch it fill up with this semantic flies. So I'm gonna leave it like this for about a day or so. Kinda weird and fascinating to watch when there's like a thousand of them in there, all throwing themselves into the wine and then drunk drowning in it. Number 5. Ants Ants are a pretty common pest in most people's houses. They tend to arrive in large numbers, walking back and forth from a pantry in a line, carrying bits of sugar or whatever else they are into to their nests. Once you have one ant in your home, you can be sure others are on the way to follow in his footsteps of the other pioneer ant. Ants aren't attracted to dirt, so cleaning things isn't going to help with this one. Often people go away on vacation and find themselves coming home to uncover a huge new colony of ants or even a flying ants, has decided to settle in while you were away. Ants follow each other's scent markings, so one way to stop them in their tracks is to wipe down the trail with disinfectant, which will erase their scent map. After, you will need to establish what species of ant you have, as this will help you figure out whereabout they have likely built their nest. Carpenter ants are some of the most annoying, as they live in moist wood, which could be a part of your home that is already damaged and are only going to make things worse. Number 4. Cockroaches I'm sure you all knew that these guys were going to figure out a way onto this list at some point. Cockroaches are some of our least favorite house guests. They tend to operate at night, but if you see one during the day, that's usually a sign you have an infestation. And let's remember something. Cockroaches can survive being microwaved and nuclear blasts, so this isn't necessarily going to be an easy battle. Finding where they're hiding out is the first task, and they like dark, moist places such 
such as behind refrigerators, sinks, and stoves, as well as under floor drains and inside of motors and major appliances. They also leave droppings behind that kind of look like ground coffee, but they sure as hell don't smell like ground coffee. That roach smell is quite special, kind of oily and musty and awful. Once you've figured them out, it's time to start getting rid of them. Specialist cockroach poisons are pretty easy to find in most regular stores. It tastes like heaven to the cockroach, but they'll soon be heading there once they've eaten it. If this doesn't resolve it, you may have to bring in the roach busting team who will fumigate your house and free you from these little monsters. Number 3. Silverfish The silverfish gets its name from its silvery body and fish-like appearance. They measure around one half to three quarters of an inch in length, and can also be called bristle tails due to the three bristles which protrude from the end of their bodies. They are a very common insect in the US and are commonly found in bathrooms, basements, and attics. They can't fly but are very fast movers on ground. Long antenna, of course the silvery sheen. Their bodies are flat ish and have a kind of teardrop shape, and they have tiny black eyes which are widely separated. Yellow stains, scales, and feces might be signs you have an infestation, as well as feeding marks which can appear on surfaces. They are usually nocturnal and have a kind of sassy, wiggling walk that is kind of like how a fish swims. Its predators are spiders and centipedes, but the silverfish is a rare catch for either of those due to its speed and agility. They can destroy food and property, so they are considered a pest and most people do not really want to have them around, although they do not transmit any diseases. Number 2. Book Lice Book lice are a common home infestation, and they can show up in great numbers, which is pretty unpleasant. They like to live in wallpaper paste, books, fabrics, furniture, and paintings, where starches can promote the growth of mold, and this is what book lice like to eat. They will also often show up in food packaging. Book lice don't bite people like other kinds of lice, and they don't have any venom in them anyway, so while they're not dangerous, they can still be considered a pest, as they will sometimes destroy books books, furniture, and other items of value. Basements, attics, closets, and other storage areas are the usual hangouts for book lice, and the best way to counteract them is to try and keep things dry. Using a dehumidifier is a good start. At less than 50% humidity, book lice will leave and look for a more humid place to live. But if they start to get out of control, you might want to call in the professionals as getting rid of them can be a pretty difficult job once they've settled in and decided to stay. Number 1. Drain Flies Drains tend to accumulate stagnant water, and while most species prefer to avoid stagnant water and go look for oxygen-rich, clean, fresh water, drain flies love nothing more than a little pool of stagnant drain water. The reason is that stagnant water is a breeding ground for bacteria. This bacteria would make us feel ill, but it is just what a drain fly is looking for, its favorite food in fact. The first sign is a small moth-like creature hanging around your drain and sink. It only takes 48 hours for a drain fly to reproduce, so you can imagine what might happen if you left this situation unresolved for a couple of weeks. Luckily, drain flies are pretty simple creatures. They can't fly very far or fast, so grabbing a can of bug spray and unloading it into the swarm will usually take out a lot of them in just a few seconds. They are not particularly harmful and do not carry diseases, but they can be a nuisance. Plenty of bug sprays and trying to stop stagnant water forming is the best strategy for coping with these little flies. What's the worst bug infestation you've ever seen? Have you ever had bed bugs? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!